Welcome back to Getting to Know, the show entirely about toys and how they've changed over the years when it comes to specific characters. We've already done a video on Soundwave and Alita 1. I enjoyed both of them. Those are both characters I really love seeing show up, not just in toy form, but also in new forms of media. That said, I do kind of want to find a more charismatic bot. Someone to really pull in new viewers. <sighs> now, who's a big personality in Transformers? Wakey, wakey. Yeah, he'll do. Knockout, one of the perennial fan favorites, beloved by the entire Transformers fandom since his introduction in Transformers Prime. Known for being a Decepticon medic, as well as his unending narcissism and his spectacular vocal performance, courtesy of one Darren Norris. Careful, Starscream, you may dislocate a landing gear patting yourself on the back. Now, Knockout is a character that I could see a lot of people jumping on me for. I said in my Elite One video that I was never going to do a character that has only appeared in one show, and Knockout has only ever appeared in Transformers Prime, though to be fair, he did eventually make it into comics. That said, Knockout is a pretty unique case compared to Soundwave and Alita 1. You see, those two characters were designed to always be those characters. This is going to be an interesting video in that we're going to finally enter into the wonderful world of the name dump. Not so long ago, Hasbro would randomly give different names to characters that weren't connected in any way, shape, or form. They did this because, well, they wanted to keep the copyright on these names. Knockout was one of those names. Unlike a lot of characters, though, he never even had a famous character to be associated with. So you think of Knockout nowadays, and you of course think of this suave Prime character, but the original holder of that name was actually all the way back in G1. And he was half of a pickup truck. There's nothing too special about him, he's kind of just like every other Micromaster. Interestingly, Knockout wouldn't be used again until they used the name for a Minicon in 2002. So, at least for a little bit, there was a trend that Knockout was going to be a name associated with very tiny Transformers. He turns into a missile truck, he looks fine, nothing special here. Thankfully, it wouldn't be too much longer until Knockout finally got a major role in a piece of fiction. Of course, I'm talking about Revenge of the Fallen Knockout. That's right, this green motorcycle boy was one of the main characters of the Veld Threat, the prequel novel to Revenge of the Fallen. Did he amount to much? No. Did he make it into the movies? No. He was killed in the comics, though, so that's something. I say all this, the figure is actually amazing. It's one of my favorite Scout class molds. The head sculpt is very insectoid, his proportions are solid, I also love the color scheme. Very sharp. Knockout was one of the breakout characters from Prime. To this day, there's still never really been another character like Knockout in Transformers, which I think is a nice little feather in his cap. Now, as much as this character is amazing, and as much as his design is great, his toy was terrible. So we have arms made out of doors, the proportions are all over the place, there is an almost non-existent paint job on this figure, despite a huge part of his character being the fact that he doesn't want people to mess up his paint job. He doesn't have any of the slick proportions or the personality of the proper knockout in the show. And this was a case where Takara didn't do any better. The stickers were annoying, and they also just chose weird colors for this knockout? It's heartbreaking. The transformation's terrible, the card mode is boring, and the robot mode barely works. It's the worst case scenario on all fronts. And to this day, that's been the only major use of Knockout. Granted, he did appear in the IDW comics, but we'll talk about a toy you can use for that design later. Now, we can just talk about some of the oddballs that really don't fit in with any of the other Knockouts. Cyberverse was a collection of minifigures within the Prime toy line. Think core class, but a little bit different, and dare I say, a little bit more interesting. Some amazing figures came out of the Cyberverse line, and in all honesty, Knockout is pretty solid. He stood about three inches tall, he wasn't the most articulated thing in the world, but the transformation was incredibly clever, and it did give you a show-accurate robot mode. Going all the way back to the original Armada Minicon Knockout, he got a few different color schemes that were all kind of interesting. You see, 
he first got a repaint into almost Constructicon colors. That looked fine enough. And then, and this is really weird, but in 2003, there was something called the Crack Ultimate Edition. What does that even mean? Back with a more familiar knockout, let's talk about the remote controlled knockout. So this was an electronic RC car. It would drive back and forth like most RC cars would, but you pushed a button and it would transform and you could actually control its arms as well. I'll be honest, knockout looks pretty solid and there's always been a part of me that loved the idea of an RC car transformer. It's part of the reason why I'm so obsessed with the RoboSyn Transformers nowadays. Here's a kind of interesting one. So there was a Transformers line called Speed Stars. It came out around the time of Dark of the Moon. And the idea was they were just vehicles, but they would transform and show off a lot of new weapons. One of them was a three-wheeled motorcycle named Knockout. There's toys that do this gimmick so much better, like the barricade. But, you know, this is something. Let's talk about some really weird Prime repaints and remolds. Looking at the Deluxe real quick, there's Dark Energon Knockout. This was a big bad toy store exclusive. And I'll say it, I love the colors here. They're very different from Knockout. It doesn't really feel like the character anymore, but it's definitely a great deco, and it honestly makes the figure look better. Alongside that, eventually Beast Hunters did what we have called Crocout, a knockout with a crocodile-inspired remolding. Again, he never looked like this in the show, but it is still kind of an interesting look, but I do think that they did eventually give this mold a better paint scheme, which was in Transformers Adventure. This time, they kept the molding, but they've turned him into a gray and black car. I think this one actually looks amazing. If there was a single knockout that I don't own that I wish I did, it's this one. Around the time of Transformers Prime, Creo was in full swing. Yeah, back before LEGO was making a really cool Optimus Prime, Hasbro tried to get into the brick building game, and it kind of worked. Some Creos were cool, other Creos were terrible. Knockout had his own Creo set, it looks like garbage. I'm sorry, dude. This just looks really, really bad. That said, we also eventually got a Creon of Knockout. This Knockout came in the Autobot Command Center playset, which means that to this day, this is the only figure of Autobot Knockout. While we're talking about smaller Knockouts, why don't we double back and talk about some of the repaints of the Cyberverse Legion Knockout. So, for some reason, in the fourth wave, he was released in orange. Knockout never appeared like this in the show. To be fair, the original Knockout, the really show accurate one, was packaged with the Energon Driller. I could see them potentially wanting to change the mainline release just to give people a reason to pick up the Driller vehicle. Later on that same year, Knockout was released in a six pack over in Japan called the Decepticon Multi Pack. It came with him, Breakdown, Megatron, Starscream, Terracon, Cliffjumper, and a Viacon. And these are the most show-accurate paint jobs these figures would ever receive. So Transformers Prime had a set of McDonald's Happy Meal toys. One of them was Knockout, only he's just a car that has some flip-out weapons. Here is just a really, really weird one. So Ultra Magnus had a toy back in Transformers Energon, and his head is able to remove from the figure and be its own little robot, and apparently that one's name is Knockout? I, I don't get it. Now we're all the way in 2022, where Legacy gave us the Prime Universe Knockout, a pretty extensive retool of the studio series Jazz. And I gotta say, I adore this figure. Does he look like Prime Knockout? No. That said, he does look a lot like the IDW versions of Knockout that tried to G1 him up. Alongside that, even though characters like RC and Bulkhead looked terrible in the original Legacy Waves, Knockout actually really made the jump from Prime to G1 incredibly well. Also, I'll say it now, when it comes to transforming Knockouts, he has the best car mode out of any of them. The reoccurring theme of this entire video is every time they tried to do Prime Knockout, the figure just was never accurate. Issues with the proportions, bad transformations, bad robot modes, crap car modes, that's just the unfortunate part of this design. It feels snake bit in a way. That said, if you just want a robot mode that looks just like he did on screen, you can check out Transformers Red. Transformers Red was a series of non-transforming Transformer figures exclusive to Walmart. Most of them were pretty bad. And yet, Knockout 
is perfect. His design is on point. His articulation is wonderful. His paint scheme, even though I think the gray is a little bit too light, works throughout. He has so many accessories and add-ons. This is the perfect knockout figure if you just want his robot mode. And there we have it. We've literally discussed every single toy to bear the name Knockout over the many years of Transformers. This one was interesting, and it's one that we're probably going to hit again if we keep this show up. Sometimes you have just these generic names that go for years being applied to any rando Transformer they can, and then out of nowhere, it becomes a fan favorite for a specific version. So now all Knockouts have to be like Prime Knockout. Not a bad thing, just an interesting evolution, and it's always kind of fun to see these more radically different designs throughout the course of these videos. So, that's getting to know episode 3 out of the way. Um, I don't know exactly who we're going to go to next. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. But other than that, what do we think of Knockout? Do we like these videos where it's a little bit more random, the figures we get? Or is it better when we stick to characters who have been established since their inception, like Soundwave and Alita 1? But in any case, guys, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.